let's learn about heteroskedasticity. So when we do linear regression, there are some assumptions. When we do statistics, we propose a model that describes reality. We assume that there's a linear relationship between our x and y variables. We assume all the observations are independent of the other observations. We have lots of assumptions. And then we have this assumption that the variance of the errors is constant for all values of x. We are going to focus on this assumption called the assumption of homoscedasticity. So let's break down the words heteroscedasticity and homoscedasticity. So hetero means different. Scedasticity is a weird word meaning having to do with the variance of errors in a statistical model. And it comes from the ancient Greek word meaning dispersion. Dispersion, variation, variance. And of course, there's also homoscedasticity, which means the variances are the same. So when we run linear regression, what we want is equal variances. We want homoscedasticity. We want the homogeneity of variances. We do not want unequal variances. We do not want heteroscedasticity. We do not want the heterogeneity of variances. These are all ways of saying the same thing. So let's look at an example. Here is a scatter plot showing height versus weight. Now, what do we notice? Well, people who are around 20 inches tall, those are just newborn babies, and they all have similar weights, maybe between 5 and 12 pounds. However, someone who is a fully grown adult male who is 6 feet tall, their weight can vary significantly. They might be 150 pounds. They might be 400 pounds. There is a lot more variability in their weight. So often, people will analyze assumptions of regression by looking at residual plots, and we can see that this unequal variances shows up in the residual plot in the same way that it shows up in the original plot. We see a fanning out pattern that shows that the variances are not equal for all values of the x variable. This fanning out pattern is called heteroscedasticity, unequal variances. What problems does this cause? Well, many of these models that we use, like linear regression, assume that we are trying to learn a parameter, sigma squared, that describes the spread of the data. And we're using the data to learn this parameter, sigma squared. However, this parameter doesn't really exist in these heteroscedastic situations because there are different variances depending on the value of the explanatory variable. There are different variances depending on how tall you are. And this makes hypothesis tests and interval estimates unreliable because they are using a variance estimate that is not only inaccurate, but does not really represent the underlying truth that the variance is changing. So we should be able to predict a baby's weight much more accurately than a person who is six feet tall. But the simple linear model does not take into account the unequal variances. Where else does heteroscedasticity matter? So linear models are common throughout statistics, and some other common statistical tests share a lot in common with linear regression. For example, in an intro statistics class, you might learn a two-sample t-test. And there are two common types of two-sample t-tests that people learn. A pooled t-test, which assumes the groups have equal variances, and an unpooled t-test, which allows the two groups to have different variances. So if we see this data on the right, we see that the two groups, men and women, have approximately equal variances. With this data, an equal variance assumption is probably okay. However, if the data looked like this, an equal variance assumption would not be okay and would lead us to incorrect conclusions. ANOVA, or analysis of variance, is the generalization of the two-sample t-test when there are more than two groups. Specifically, it generalizes the pooled two-sample t-test because ANOVA always assumes equal variances. So with this data that we see here, all three groups look like they have equal variance. So ANOVA is probably okay. However, if the data looked like this, an equal variance assumption would not be okay and would lead us to incorrect conclusions. So in summary, many statistical tests require you to estimate the variance in standard deviation. And this is much easier if there is only one variance to estimate. If the variance is changing, it can cause issues with our statistical model. That's the end. Please like and subscribe to learn more statistics.